And good morning, everybody. Thank you again for joining us on this uh, Sunday, and it's a day of worship and a day of praise. Well, as we look out, uh, there's nobody here as usual, but uh, we haven't seen any earth-moving equipment out here yet, but that's okay. I'm told that it's going to be happening after a couple of snags are worked out. We're going to see some ground moving, and that's exciting. I can't wait. Also, I wanted to mention to you last week, I said that you uh, can give online if you want to support the church and the, and the needs that it has, even during this time of safer at home. I said that you can give online. There's also ways to send checks to the church, too. You can send them to 1800 Crawford Street in Baraboo, Wisconsin, 53913. Well... Those are, the, those are it for the announcements. I do have a call to worship today, and it's from 1 Peter chapter 1. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is by His great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine, it is being tested, and fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. I wanted to go back to verse 6. It says, So truly be glad. How can we keep from singing how can we keep from singing his praise? Join with me in song as we worship the Lord in this most unusual way, but that's okay. Stand up if you want to, or you can remain seated. It doesn't really matter, but just participate with us. How can I keep from singing? There is an endless song that goes in my soul. I hear the Where we roam, ancient world. 
Before we go any further, let's pause for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you in prayer this morning. We thank you again for the opportunity that we have of gathering 
together while we are alone and separated. But we are together in your spirit. You have promised that where we are gathered, even two or three of us, you will be there in the midst. Now, I'm not sure that when that was written in Scripture, that even at that time they envisioned gathering together like this. But God, the promise is still true. We are gathered in your name, and you are here in the middle of us because you are with us in each and every location where where we're going to view this video, where we're going to participate in this worship service, where we have sung, where we are now praying, and in a minute where we will together listen to the open word of God. So God, I pray your blessings upon this time in this service unique though it may be. We're, we're beginning to get more used to this kind of meeting. But God, I pray that you would reach out to everyone within the sound and view of this video, that you would encircle us. God, there are some people who are listening today, watching, and they're very anxious uh, some may even have COVID-19 and are trying to recover from it. Others, God, are anxious because of the fact that they have not been able to be together with loved ones. They have not been able to be uh, together in a building that we call a church. But God, I pray that you would help us to remember that we are the church wherever we are. And so as we gather in our homes or perhaps other places, that you would bless us, draw us close to you, help us to understand, Lord, that you are beside us. Some of us may be beside ourselves with uh, concern and worry, but in the middle of that, I pray that you would reach down with your arms of encouragement, love, and comfort and may we hear you speak the words, Peace be unto you. God, go across the miles. We may not have togetherness, but our district superintendent, uh, Dr. Kevin Donnelly, has coined a phrase, Prayer Proximity. And God, while I am praying this prayer verbally in Mantino, Illinois, almost 250 miles away from maybe more than 250 miles from some who watch this video, we are in proximity together because we are in your spirit. God, move, touch those who are ill today. Give strength to those workers that work so diligently to save lives. Be with government officials who are making important decisions. And whatever decisions they make, whether they be uh, the president or a governor or a mayor or a city council person or an advisor, whatever decisions they make and publicly declare, we can be assured and they can be assured that there will be some who think those are good decisions and there will be others who think those are terrible decisions. Be with them all. Be with us all. Enable us by your Spirit to draw close to you today and may we feel the joy and happiness that we felt a week ago on Easter Sunday. Bless now the rest of this service in your name I pray. Amen. Well, those of you who have watched uh, the two previous Sunday services, 
will notice that I'm sitting in a different location this morning. I've been advised that I need to get away from that uh, totally white, sunny background uh, because I was washing out in some cases on the video. And, and one thing I don't want to do is wash out. So I am sitting today, welcome to my home. Uh, I'm sitting at the dining room table. Uh, behind me, uh, over on, on this side, you can see our front door. And behind me, and I'm going to do something really weird, I'm going to lean over. Uh, behind me on the wall is a picture of Jesus Christ in the garden. Uh, that picture was given to my wife Sharon a, a few years ago uh, by... Uh, an individual who Sharon had ministered to in a retirement center. And uh, it contains the, the words of John. We're going to be talking about John's gospel today. It contains the words of John handwritten in such a way that the picture of Jesus Christ comes into focus. That's what I'm hoping that we do. I'm praying that we do today that we, through the Gospel of John, will begin to focus more clearly on the God's Son, the man, Jesus Christ. So I say, welcome to our home. A, a number of years ago in the Church of the Nazarene, a, a motto was developed about the church. The motto has been used uh, down through the years since then, and is still being used in the in, in many places and and it was a welcome to our church and the theme the motto was our church can be your home i i thought of that as i was uh, sitting here getting prepared to begin this uh, portion of the service and i thought welcome our home can be your church i trust that today we will feel the presence of God in our midst. Before, before I get to the sermon, I, I, I want to take a personal privilege moment or two. I hope you'll forgive me. I want to say uh, happy birthday to our oldest granddaughter, Ashley Grimm. Ashley is uh, 22 years old today. Happy birthday, Ash. Uh, it's interesting because of uh, safer at home and other kinds of ways of referring to it and calling it, even though we live less than 10 miles from Ashley's home where she lives with uh, her mom and dad and sister, uh, we're less than 10 miles from them, but we won't get to see them today, except we'll probably do some kind of telephone video meeting of some sort to wish Ashley a happy birthday. So, I'm sorry for taking these few minutes, but uh, happy birthday, Ashley. We love you. Uh, let's turn now to the Gospel of John. John specifically tells us in the last chapter, the next to the last chapter of the Gospel, why he wrote the book. I want us I want us to look more closely today at that purpose statement. As I start the sermon today, let's look at John's statement in chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, where John says, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that, now here's the purpose, these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. In the, in the Living Bible paraphrase of these verses, we read, Jesus' disciples saw him do many other miracles besides the ones told about in this book, but these are recorded so that you will believe he is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you may have life 
you may have life. Earlier this week, well, since this is the first day of the week, I guess I should say earlier last week, I, I sent out a request for help for my message today. I quoted these two verses in the, in the uh, email that I sent to the members of the Baraboo First Church of the Nazarene Congregation. And I, I quoted these two verses and asked that the members of the congregation help me in preparation for this sermon by uh, sending me a return email or a text or even calling me on the phone to talk about one of the signs or miracles that is recorded in the Gospel of John that Jesus had done that John apparently thought it was fit for him to put into the narrative so that the purpose, the responses that I received, were, were very interesting. I received some very helpful responses. I'll, I'll talk about some of them today and, and others perhaps in, in weeks to come. Uh, it, it, there's some interesting things that, that showed up. One thing that stood out to me of the responses that I heard this week, 75% of the responses focused at least on the same passage of Scripture. Now, I had told people that they could send me one or to two or three of uh, the, the events, miracles, or signs. And uh, so out of those who sent to me, 75% of the responses included uh, a portion of John chapter 7, which we will get to in a few minutes. But first, it, it would be helpful for you and me for the rest of this message if you would have Bibles close at hand so that you can look up the scriptures that are referenced. And by doing that, you might be able to understand more of what John is saying in our focus scriptures today. So uh, take a moment, if you will, to get your Bible. Maybe it's right there. Maybe you already have it. Maybe it's in the other room. Um, if you get your Bible and get ready to look at John chapter, uh, well, I'll tell you the chapters in a minute, but it's kind of interesting. I'm having a mental picture right now, uh, a mental picture that makes me want to at least smile and perhaps even laugh at the, I'm going to coin a word, differentness of our situation. I, I'm picturing that people who are watching this video, maybe you started to watch the video at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning when it became available, or maybe you're watching this video next Friday night. But I, I, uh, I could imagine you getting up, walking around your house to uh, look up your Bible <laughs> and, and, and then return to your seat, <clears throat> excuse me, return to your seat. That would never happen in church, would it? In a building called a church? <clears throat> if you were in the church building today, and I said, take your Bibles, if your Bible was at the back of the auditorium or out in the entryway, you wouldn't get up and get it. I hope some of you got it. Let's, let's first of all, look at John chapter 1. Let me point out some passages that, and this was one of the phone calls I received this week that highlighted this, though not particularly John chapter 1. But the the individual talked about the fact that uh, in John, John the writer, John the writer, the revelator, records for us the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revelation itself. <clears throat> Excuse me. John chapter 1, uh, verse 14. The translation that I have in front of me says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who comes from the father, full of grace and truth. I like the translation, the translation that says, and Jesus became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. 
the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The revelation. Back in, in verse 12, there are three key words. John says in the, in the t translation that I'm reading from, to all who did receive him, Jesus, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Three action words. Believe, receive, become. Well, I could preach an entire message on those three words. In fact, I have more than once, I think. In, in verse 15, John says, and he's talking now about John the Baptist. John the Baptist testified concerning him, concerning Jesus. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me. This is the one I spoke about. I'm, I told you about him. Then if you jump over to verse 29, the next day, John, again, speaking about John the Baptist, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God. And again in verse 36, the same words are recorded. The next day, John was there with, the, with two of his disciples. John the Baptist was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. The, the very revelation of Jesus Christ as the Messiah himself is recorded in the first chapter and, and then other chapters throughout the book, which we will get to, though not all of them today. Then, in chapter 2, the first miracle of Jesus. I'd like to briefly refer to Jesus' first miracle discussed in chapter 2. Jesus was ready to help. Well, let me read it. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples <clears throat> had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Jesus replied, Woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you to do. And if you're familiar with this chapter in Scripture, the first miracle that John saw fit to record, understanding, remember, the purpose of the book. The first miracle is Jesus turning the water into wine. Two quick things that I want to point out to all of us today who are watching, who are living in this very unusual, difficult time. Yeah, it's a difficult time. Jesus was ready to help. Even though he told his mother, it's not my time yet. And she had enough faith and said to the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. And, and Jesus did, and they drew out water that had been put into the water pots. And it was wine. Jesus provided in that situation that which kept the host at the wedding, from being embarrassed. Jesus helped in a time of his need. But then there's also a fact that we don't very often consider. <laughs> Jesus kept the party going. A wedding reception. They're out of wine. His mother says, uh, Jesus, they're out of wine. And he said, no, wait a minute. I, I, don't, I don't want to get involved. And she kind of pushed him by telling the servants, do whatever he says. And his miracle kept the party going. I, I like that about Jesus. Even in the middle of a pandemic, I'm reminded, well, 
okay, we're talking about the purpose of the Gospel of John. And remember, John himself says, I have written these things down so that you will believe he is the Messiah and that by believing in him, you will have life. Boy, what a party. And Jesus kept the party going. Now, uh, one of the respondents, when I sent out that email and asked for help, referred to this passage and said, that first sign, the miracle of turning water into wine, that first sign was the start of revealing Jesus as the Son of God. I like that. I probably wouldn't have thought of that, and I, if I hadn't thought of it, I certainly wouldn't have put it in my message. So I'm glad for the help that I got today, this week. Now, let's turn to the passage, chapter 7. The passage that I mentioned earlier, that 75% of the people who responded to my plea <clears throat> for help referred to John chapter 7. Now there's some interesting, if, if you've got your Bibles, I want to I wanna show you some very interesting uh, aspects. Jesus is later in his ministry now. But I, I want to read you something very interesting. Uh, Jesus' brothers... We don't hear a lot about, they thought he was crazy. We do, we do know that from other passages of Scripture. But in the, uh, in the third verse, it's, it's the time of the festival of the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem. And in the third verse of the seventh chapter, John says, Jesus' brother said to him, leave Galilee and go to Judea so that your disciples there may see the works you do. And then the fourth verse is absolutely incredible. His brothers say to him, no one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Huh? Let me read it again. Jesus' brothers said to him, leave Galilee and go to Judea so that your disciples may see the works you do. No one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. <laughs> we have all kinds of illustrations of that today, don't we? I'm, I'm going to reject the temptation to begin talking about uh, political figures in our world today. <clears throat> but Jesus' brothers said, get out there and do some miracles. Nobody who wants to become a public figure. Well, who said he wanted to become a public figure? That's interesting. They had grown up with him. We don't know a lot about him, about them. But, but if you turn over to verse 10, <clears throat> you'll see that they finally just gave up trying to persuade him to go. And they went, they left. And then verse 10 says, However, after his brothers had left for the festival, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. He didn't listen to his brothers, did he? Now, verse 12, it's interesting. Verse 12 says, among the crowds, there was widespread whispering about him. Some said, he's a good man. Others replied, no, no, he deceives the people. Oh, I'm going to reject the temptation. No, I'm going to give in to the temptation. A lot of our public figures today are like that as well, are they not? But my point is, they were watching Jesus, and among the crowd, among the, the, the people that were meeting there at that great festival, there was whispering about him. And they didn't know that he was around. 
Verse 15. Verse 15. The Jews were amazed and asked, How did this man get such learning without having been taught? We didn't teach him. How did they know he hadn't been taught? Well, I'll leave you to conjecture about that. But they were amazed at him. And then in verse 31, this is also interesting. They said, when the Messiah comes, Will, will he perform more signs than this man? In other words, you could tell that they were keeping track of him. And uh, they were questioning about him all through the crowd. They were, they were saying, where is this teacher? Where is Jesus? What's, what, why isn't he here? And then if we jump down to verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the festival, or as some translations put it, the feast, Jesus stood and in a loud voice said, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Verse 40. On hearing his words, some of the people said, Surely this man is the prophet. Others said, he's the Messiah. Jesus revealing himself at that great feast of tabernacles. Let's go back to our focus scripture. John chapter 20. Jesus coming now after death and resurrection, dealing with his disciples in the 20th chapter, and then John the writer says, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Pointed question that I think makes sense at this moment. Do you have life in his name? Have you believed in him? Have you received him into your heart, have you asked him to forgive you of your personal sins? And have you and are you becoming what he can enable you to be? That's the purpose of the gospel. That's the purpose of scripture, that we might understand not just that he died and rose again, but the purpose of his death and resurrection, the purpose of the signs and miracles, the purpose of his life was to bring us forgiveness of sins. And so as we close the service today, I would pray that wherever you are, whenever you are watching this video, this worship service, if you do not know life, in Jesus Christ that while I am praying today you would pray you might say well I don't know how to pray doesn't matter you don't have to know how to pray praying is just talking 
talking to God. So while I talk to God, you talk to God. Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we talk to you. Jesus, your disciple, John, has written that the, the signs and miracles about which he wrote were written in the gospel that we call John's gospel so that we might believe and that we might experience you as our Lord and Savior. God, wherever there is someone today who is watching who has not prayed that prayer, I ask that you would enable them with your help to simply say, Jesus, I thank you for your gift of dying for me. I thank you, Lord, for the power of your resurrection for me. Jesus, I believe in you. I receive you. Help me to become what you want me to be. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Trust you'll be able to join us again next week. God bless you.